TMX podcast powered by Rosenthal Coaching. Today, in our 10th episode, you, we will address uh, a, a very interesting and challenging topic, which is um, how the three behaviors, types of behaviors, independent, dependent, and interdependent, play out in team dynamics and how they can work together. Hello, I'm Stelu Zaleo. And I'm Gabriel Tranafilescu. We are professional coaches working with team leaders and their teams to unleash their superpowers and maximize results. If you're new to our podcast and channel, follow us, subscribe, and get notified whenever we go live. So today we talk about these three um, characteristics, three values that some of us um, stand for quite a lot, which is independence, dependence and interdependence in the context of teamwork and high-performing teams, right? And how these three values harmoniously intermingle. Hmm. Interdependence is defined as the extent to which team members work collectively, affect and are affected by others, right? So this is a really interesting topic for us because we can see this playing out in various teams. And we've seen this um three characteristics um showing up in teams in various ways and this is why we wanted to talk about this and to have an entire episode about this because many of us are used to work independently right we value independence as a high as a high priority and we do like to be independent whilst being independent is a good thing because you know you have um, everything you need and you have the ability to achieve your goals um, your to do your tasks and uh, complete whatever you need to complete when you are working in a team you are dependent on your team members and you also need to learn to work interdependently. So, Gabe, let's talk about how these three do play out in the team dynamics. And why do they play an important part in team's life, right? Hmm. Yeah, first of all, I, I think, uh, as you mentioned, the three of them are uh, just... Uh, inevitable they all they all must happen together and in the high performing teams they they are working together harmoniously and coherently so they each type of behavior uh, you know has its own purpose and i would just take them one by one to uh, to share my my view on those first of all as much as independence is so greatly valued and, and uh, you know sought after and, and praised, I would say it's a very overrated uh, perspective. And that's because we all know, like at least uh, people who work with teams or in teams, that there is no higher power than working with a team. So if you were to, you know, to compare, hey, I'm independent 100%, I'm so... I'm achieving so much stuff. You can never compare to a team when you are working in a team uh, coherently and and in a high performing team. So I would say, you know, in you know, in the popular culture, independence is so it's so like in movies and, and books and stuff like that. It, it's it's very uh, inflated because in fact it, it's you know independence it is valuable, but it's not the ultimate uh, you know. Uh, type of uh, thing to 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 fight for or to you know to look for when you can have a harmonious uh, teamwork uh, working in independent interdependently and sometimes dependence because we will we'll talk about that where it's necessary and also inevitable. So I, I just wanted to point out this independent. I'm I'm a very independent person and I've always been independent and. It, Probably in the first 40 years of my life, I, I thought that was the only way. Like, uh, hey, I need to, you know, feel myself empowered and strong by doing everything I can on my own. And I know many people feel the same. But also when you worked in a team, and, and I hope you at least once in your life or you are right now working in a team, there is no higher power than and what you can achieve. And 
um, you know, feel like your work is so valued while you're working with a team. So, and, and I will also uh, now address the dependency, which is, as you said, Stelutsa, it has a very bad rep, right? Depend, oh my God, I, I don't want to be dependent. And on the other hand, uh, situations and behaviors where you are dependent are also inevitable and sometimes necessary. Like uh, I would say the simplest example, it's a baby who is dependent on his mother to survive. I mean, how, how can that be a bad thing, right? It's a, it's a natural and beautiful thing. The baby needs her mother, uh, their mother to, you know, nourish them. And, and it's the same thing with uh, uh, dependence in a team. Sometimes you need stuff to get your stuff done. So, for example, you need uh, certain uh, approvals or you need certain resources to get from somebody else. It's not a bad thing. That, so dependence is not bad in itself. Uh, so much as independence is not wonderful in itself. It's the same thing. You know, like nothing, every kind of value is how you look at it and how you, how you want to take the best of it. You can take the best of dependence and, and, you know, acknowledge it and see that you need it and you, uh, you need it for your work so much so as you can do the same with, uh, independence and say, Hey, yes, I, I love to be independent, but I, I need to work, uh, with this team and, you know, depend on each other and, uh, be affected by each other's work, as you said. I think these are the two extremes that somehow are you know, misplaced in the, the, the general culture. And some one of, one of them is uh, inflated and the other one is, has got a bad rep. Like they have an intrinsic good or bad value. They don't have bad values or good values. It's how you, we use them and how we make them work together. And now, the, yes, the third one, which is interdependence, of course, it's, um, I would say, uh, the found, one of the pillars of the foundation of a high performing team when, when, when team members can work harmoniously like an orchestra, right? They, they work together. Their, their, their sound, you know, works, uh, uh and intermingle and complement each other. And it's, it's just a beautiful, like a symphony. That's where team members work harmoniously, uh, and interdependently. So these are my, my three views and, and why they all play an important uh, role, as you mentioned, in, in a team's uh, life, because you need to adjust to uh, each one of them at a certain um, time or certain events or certain tasks. So there is my... my. And as I was playing around here with the, with the buttons and couldn't find the right one, I'm going to ask you, you know, because we were talking about interdependence and I think, uh, and we all think, and there is uh, research, we, we've done some research also, and uh, there are studies done about the importance of interdependence and inter interdependence in achieving high performance. And in order to achieve high performance, you need to be, to learn to work interdependently with each other. That's, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And one of the things that needs to happen when you, in order to, to be interdependent and to be able to function properly is to create trust in teams, right? Mm. And this is one of the values that needs to, to stay at the, to be a foundation for, for a team to work coherently, interdependently and achieve performance. And we had an entire episode, I think last week uh, on the values of a team, of the top five mm -hmm. values of, of a team that we covered after doing our own research and working with, with the teams and from our own experience. And you can see the link here and maybe you can access it there. So, Gabe, let's talk about how each team has their own dynamics and how these, these three, we can call them values or characteristics of, you know, being independent, dependent, and interdependent play out in each Team, right, because when we go in, we can see that we can see that there are certain team members that would, would rather do everything on their own, and they don't need anyone. And you can see that you can see people who like to go and ask questions. They never like to be alone. They need to be uh, to uh, someone to hold their hands. They always go and have something. They they don't like to take the risk. They don't like to uh, to um, uh, to 
not necessarily the risk, but also the responsibility of achieving, accomplishing something. And there are also people who really thrive, you know, with the social skills and uh, and the professional skills that they have, thrive in a team and they work really nicely together. And this is, um, these three uh, characteristics play out in each team and each team has um, its own uh, specific model, right, in which uh, these three intermingle. Mm -hmm. What do you think that we as coaches, when we go, go into a team, can see at the surface, right? When we do either the assessment, when we have the, the initial conversations with the teams and with the team leader or the HR, and how can this be shifted towards hmm. achieving high performance when this specific model does not, you know, serve the, the purpose of the team? Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. So first of all, as you uh, were asking about uh, uh, inquiring about how each team has their own model. Yes, each each high performing team or even non performing team uh, has their own culture, uh, which is different than sometimes or I would say many times than the company, the, the whole organization's culture. They have their own, you know, like their own. Uh, I would say, uh, quote unquote, family. It's not like a real family, but somehow it is. So they have their own, like internal uh, kind of uh, energy type type of energy that they always have together, you know. And and going to the uh, how you said uh, uh, how you can shift them. First of all, when you when we see them, uh, whether it's it's uh, with our team coin assessment or their own type of uh, addressing uh, and assessing how how the teams uh, are. Um, you see those things, like you see them playing out, you know, in any any team meeting. So there's always someone who would rather not say anything. There is always uh, someone who would like to speak all the time. There is always someone else who speaks always after someone else. So this this uh, particular uh, features of every team it's their forms their own culture this is what they're made of you know sometimes ev everybody uh, there is one who always uh, laughs at somebody else's jokes there's always someone who always looks at the boss uh, and uh, and someone else is doing something else there you can find these systemic patterns all over the place and 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 then you see uh, also, when they interact with each other, uh, what their values are, are, as you mentioned, trust is always at the top for any any kind of type, high performing team because it's uh, uh, it's the highest valued value and uh, and it's it's so hard to get and to um, you know to to make sure it's there all the time. Because when you work interdependently, you need to trust that uh, every other task that depends on someone else uh, and vice versa, people need to trust each other because otherwise you always have other thoughts, you know, side sideway thoughts and, and mistrust and, and inquiring things that are not necessary and all the other stuff that adds uh, unnecessary baggage to the entire working. So uh, in order to shift, coming back to your second question, in order to shift the team dynamics into a, a more performing or higher performing mode, um, I would say the, the first thing um, uh, we are usually working on is, is uh, disrupting uh, the, the uh, un unnecessary type of behaviors like when it's with when it's a bad way of being dependent on uh, when when it shouldn't be the case right and so that that would be a bad type of dependency for example uh, an employee who uh, a team member who always goes back to the manager for for something that it shouldn't like it shouldn't happen and that of course, we know that it means the delegation was not done correctly because 
Uh, yeah, I, I just I wanted to add uh, another example that I've witnessed myself in some teams, right? When there are people who are very skilled uh, and um, they have technical skills and there are new people in the team, I've noticed the type of behavior in which the new team members, instead of doing the research for themselves and, you know, getting the knowledge, going through the trainings and everything, develop a, a type of behavior in which they go back to the, the more experienced uh teammates and keep on asking and these at the beginning might be okay and might be you know everybody has mm -hmm. a, a willingness to support and to help in a team because you know that because of the culture mm -hmm. that's created in there if there is such a culture of course and but this creates a pattern that in time creates a lot of heaviness and a lot of mm -hmm. um, uh, load for the more experienced people and a dependence that it's absolutely not necessary because in time the new uh, teammates uh, team members do gather their experience but this pattern gets created and it's there, this dependence uh, stays there for a long time and it's it absolutely not necessary and yeah. it, it um, I think it disempowers both sides of, of the relationship both the more experienced and the, the newer who become more experienced team members as well Yes, absolutely. And, and this is a type of uh, dependence that should be disrupted and, and discouraged because, as you mentioned, uh, it, it doesn't help anybody, actually. Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, so uh, so coming back to the shifting, right, uh, of, of the energy and, and the team dynamics towards uh, higher performing patterns, uh, I, I mentioned, and you also uh, added about a certain type of dependency, which is not good. Uh, you, you sh also, we also look at where independency is is taken to the extreme, and some team members they are not willing, or they are somehow afraid, or somehow uh, not comfortable working with the others, right? So, and then they they. Uh, sometimes exclude themselves or they are they feel that they are being excluded for the team and, and they um, somehow rupture their relationship with the team and that's obviously not healthy so we're working on integrating all the team members through different frameworks so that ca so that so that uh, they can work interdependently and harmoniously and and feel okay with that feel, feel comfortable and obviously uh, there is an immersion type of process where you know different stages and, and different uh, tasks are being integrated and and these people who sometimes felt ignored or felt you know pushed away they they see that hey I'm not I wasn't actually pushed away I, I can work with these people and I actually you know they're friendly and and uh, helpful and we can do stuff together so you know, through different frameworks, we, we bring this together. So, uh, and, and also, uh, last but not least, uh, of course, the interdependency uh, needs always to have the highest stake, like the highest, uh, you know, piece of the pie, because that's where the high performing uh, processes happen when, when people work mostly interdependently and, and they really trust each other. And we work to take that to the next level, what, what's the what's the next level of uh, you know greatness that you can take the inter interdependency? How can the team sing better together? How can their their symphony sound even better? You know, like uh, so. Th these are addressing each type of behavior separately and also together through different frameworks. The team dynamics can be shifted into uh, higher performing gear. That's so cool. And I just wanted to share that one of the things that we talk about when we talk about team dynamics is the fact that these dynamics are the foundation and they are the, the, the underlying forces that happen within a team. And most of the times, the team members are not even aware of these team dynamics, whilst there might be something that it's bothering them, whilst some of them might be aware of some of the, the these dynamics, these underlying forces that happen, they're not always aware. And the fact that a coach comes, a team coach comes in and um, 
creates holds the space for these teams mm. to notice these dynamics that uh, play within their team. This uh, uh, dependency between certain team members upon other members, this independency, as you said, taken to the extreme of other team members and other dynamics that happen in there. This is actually, I think we had an episode in which you mentioned that just by us as coaches being there and creating the space for these uh, dynamics to, re to be revealed, uh, revealed to mm -hmm. surface uh, is in itself very powerful because people do realize that, oh, mm -hmm. crap, maybe <laughs> my attitude towards being very independent, whilst it serves me, it brings a, a disadvantage to the entire mm -hmm. team and it, it stops us or it, it holds us back or it slows us down when we want to achieve our goals. Because one of the things that interdependence does it creates for team members it's it creates a sense of we're all in here together following the same path um, looking to achieve the same thing so it creates that sense of uh, of a common shared faith if you mm -hmm. if we might say that in a team right so just by being there as coaches and creating this space people start to to know this these mm -hmm. and they start shifting them because as you said right it's like in quantum in quantum physics right what you focus on shows up somehow the the fact that you look upon something that mm -hmm. you look at something it's revealed mm -hmm. yeah that, that's an excellent that's an excellent point and and um I would like to take from you that and uh, and also add that um, uh, like like the common fate as you said uh, it comes and, and interdependency comes together with with a shared purpose uh, and, and they are very very connected. So when the team and now maybe we uh, we are we are addressing the third idea. So how to develop a stronger and, and interdependent uh, team uh, to work better together. Is uh, I would say there, you know, like a, a several uh, points where you can fine tune or adjust, you know, in, in the in the whole team dynamics, and and the common purpose is one of them. And uh, I would say it's critical that for a team to actually work interdependently and harmoniously and, and coherently, they need to believe together in in the, in this shared purpose they this is i would even say they must they must have this shared purpose uh, and trust in it and you know like every day they come to work and and they do stuff together or or even independently but it's like this has to be always in the back of the mind like has to be like always that drive that force that that pulls them towards it like this hey Today I'm working because our team has this purpose, and I'm working I like to do my part in 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 achieving this uh, shared purpose and and making it happen. So I would say this would be like the first thing we we look at. Does all do all the team member have this shared purpose and believe in it every day when they come to work, and 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 does their work. Uh, relate to this every day. So this would be the first uh, to um, to look at. And then, of course, the values that we mentioned last episode and to make sure all the team members are aligned to the same values and accept them as being their core values of the team that, that they all share. And all their actions and needs to be connected to those values. Because we know that if you do stuff consistently against your values, the, there is a lot of disruption happening and in the team and at, at the personal level as well. You, you can't, as a coherent person, nobody can do constantly things that are contrary to their values and beliefs. So that is the same with the team. Like It, it just can't happen. They need to make sure all the time the leader um, mostly needs to make sure all the time that their values are always in sync and and their values are connected to the actions and they make sense together so i would say this these are the main two factors uh that i, I would say always need to be part of a self uh, like like a 
of a continuous improvement model that we are often helping teams uh, build. Okay, and how can a team, uh, a team leader or a manager, uh, Gabe, um, work himself besides making sure, right? And if you watch uh, the uh, guys, if you watch the episode on team values, uh, you can see which are the values that we are talking about, mostly in order to create trust. How can a team leader, besides generate and create trust, support their team members in? Um, cause they don't always can, uh, uh, not all team leaders or team managers have a green light for a budget for team coaching. Right. So mm -hmm. how can they, uh, themselves support their teams and, and create this, uh, deeper sense of trust and in interdependency as leaders and in order to, for them to achieve higher results, is there, does it have to do with the leadership style or uh, how can they do that? Yeah, uh, you know, we talked about uh, circular leadership in a, in a previous episode. So I would say uh, for a leader, regardless of if, he, if they have budget or not for team coaching, they can, uh, you know, bring in a, a certain way of uh, listening to the team and uh, letting the team know that they want to improve and uh, they, they want to offer them Whatever resources are available, but mostly, you know, like any team member, the first thing they need to do is that the, their leader has time and attention for them. That this, it doesn't cost, you know, like a budget to have that. So it's a mindset. It's the leader needs to be there for their team, needs to show and to make sure that they know, the team knows that, hey, I'm here for you. I, I want you to be better and I want you to, uh, you know, work better together and how can I be of service? How can I, because the leader after all, I would say needs to serve the team. It's somehow counterintuitive because I would say the old, the old ways of, uh, I would say thinking about leadership was, Hey, the leader, like, uh, you know, the King has to be uh, served by the other people. But I would say uh, in an, real powerful leader serves their team. So they need to be there. I'm here for you. The, the team needs to know their leader is there and, and provides all the resources and, and tools and uh, systems that the, the team needs to grow. I would say that's the ultimate um, behavior in a good way that a leader can have, regardless of the budget, that doesn't cost anything. That's so true. And I think this plays a lot to, you know, what a lot of the, uh, you know, people leaders talk about in, in uh, developing cultures within organizations based on the fact that each of us, whether we're, you know, we're talking about personal relationships or professional relationships, but especially in the, you know, in the workplace, people need to be seen, heard and understood, right? So I think this is the best thing, as you said, this is the best thing a leader can do for each team member create that relationship that makes each team member individually feel like they do matter, that they are seen by their manager, that they are heard and they are understood regardless of what is what their journey is in, in their professional career or personal career. Because um, a thing that we, we like and I like to talk about is the fact that behind any title, there's a human being going uh, through mm -hmm. personal experiences. And I think you you also had a conversation with one of our clients on, on this topic, right? Because mm -hmm. the way we show up individually every day at work is not just a robot who puts on a, a shirt and the nice uh, nice shoes and takes a bag and goes to work. It's We are human beings who bring in our personal uh, life experiences at work. So as a team leader, uh, creating that space for each team member to be seen, heard, and understood is probably one of the basic things they can do in order to shift the dynamics and change the environment that uh, the team member is working in, mm -hmm. in order for them to achieve success. Because this creates that sense that 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 interconnectedness that we all long for regardless of whether we work 
together in the same office or we work remotely, we all need to, to belong to something. And when this belonging is based on each of us being seen, heard and understood and feeling that we have a common goal, that we have a common uh, um, path uh, that we share, and that there is also someone who leads us on that path because many people also need to feel the need to be led. They, not all people like to be leaders and feel comfortable being leaders. I think this creates the, the, that base layer that a, a team needs in order to, to be successful. And because after that, once you, you feel safe in a team and once a, the leader need, knows that he or she can trust their team members and this trust is developed, whatever goals, whatever tasks, whatever resources are required to achieve high performance, they're just things that we can work on after that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I just want to add that you, I, I don't want people to get uh, uh, this idea diminished because what you said is, is very, very important. But you said it's, it's the basic thing, but I would say people watching us make sure understand that it's one of the most powerful things that a leader can do, even if it's basic. Yes, as you said, it's basic and everybody should be able to do it because it's so... Uh, I, I mean, you, you don't need a lot of other prerequisites to do that. You just need to have your heart open and, and you know, uh, make your team uh, members know that, hey, I'm here for you. But so, as, as you said, it's basic, yet it's so powerful and uh, so important for the people to know. And yes, we, we just had that conversation um, with our client yesterday, uh, discovering that, hey, uh, I was thinking that maybe going into, you know, this type of, uh, you know, kind of emotional conversations with, with my team is not really good. But now as I'm like on a second, on a second thought, I, I think this could be very like powerful shifting in, in our team dynamics. And uh, they, they went ahead and starting doing it. So, uh, yes, it's uh, very powerful. Yeah. And maybe we can have right a, a full episode on this, right? How to how to support your team members individually, and how to make them uh, feel seen, heard, and understood. Because I think this is uh, uh, one of the things that many, especially young new leaders, team leaders, are afraid to do: get into that, uh, bring that personal touch, that personal mm -hmm. connection beyond just you know everyday tasks beyond kpis beyond this so maybe we can have you know th we can think about um uh an entire episode on that because i'm yeah. sure that there are a lot of new leaders new team leaders who who need some extra you know tools and some ideas on how to do that and maybe some more inspiration on how to do that and maybe we can invite you know maybe we can have our our um, client one day and talk about his experience and um Sure. How does that, how him stepping into this uh, uh, new or developing this new soft skill um, um, translated into improving his mm -hmm. team's performance? So before we go, Gabe, because we're at uh, the top of our time here, do you have any closing remarks? Do you want to say anything before we end? Uh, yeah, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, be sure uh, to follow us on uh, our channels, YouTube as well, where you can see all, all our episodes. And if you want to see how team coaching can be useful to you as, as a leader and your team, uh, regardless if you have budget or not, we are also uh, we are helping in any way we can. Of course, we will like, we will also uh, uh, make money, but... Uh, we can help in, in many other ways. So reach out to us and we'll be able to we'll be happy to share um, how you can support your team. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, everyone, for watching, for listening to us. Make sure to subscribe, to follow us. Reach out to us on LinkedIn, uh, on YouTube. Follow us, as Gabe said. Uh, meanwhile, until next Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, stay safe, stay well, stay positive, and see you next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Stelutza. Thank you, everyone.